Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joel Duggan, if you are new, and today is the Friday LEGO Let's Chat and the TIE Interceptor, the UCS, the Ultimate Collector Series set that we've been working on, is on the table and it barely fits in the shot. So if I get bigger LEGO sets in the future, I may have to think about raising the camera up a little bit so we can fit a little bit more in the shot from time to time. Oh, Boo, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. I see a number of other regular folks in chat. I think I saw Crosshatch earlier. We've got a hype train really close. So if you want to join the hype train, it's 100 bits, a tier one sub or a prime sub. And uh, both of those subs get you access to the Discord. But if you prefer, check out patreon.com slash Joel Duggan. That is where you can join the Discord for just $2 a month. A lot different than Twitch. Uh, there aren't the emotes that come along with it, but you get to use the emotes in the Discord. So that's fun. Uh, it's also very affordable for you and a great way to support your favorite creators. So don't forget about Patreon when you're out there looking to support your favorite folks. I think it's a Mind Trip Media post I've got to thank. My, um, my Streamlabs thing had to reset. Mind Trip Media with 100 bits, yes, four minutes ago. And True Purple resubbed 65 months. You can pull old age pension now with your 65 months, True Purple. <laughs> Thanks very much. So I'm going to try and slide this out of the way. We're going to get into bag 17. I don't know if I can get this completely off camera. Oh, look at that. A little shadow or the, just the, the stand, but it mostly out of the way. Isaac, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. I noticed that Twitch this month has discontinued the new chatter notification. So if you're uh, 17, is this really going to be? I guess so. Let me just double check where we were. I wonder if I've maybe opened up the wrong bag. Oh, maybe not. 15. I didn't see a 16. 16 was the top of that, and this should be the one, the one wing. The one wing to woo them all. Them all. It's a terrible joke. I'm sorry. I was sorry for that as soon as it came out of my mouth. Uh, yeah, that's the bottom left wing. Okay. Bottom right wing, I guess. That goes on there. All right, it's 17. All right. We're fine. 202 is the page number. How's everyone's Friday going? Mine was pretty good. I was putting in some behind the scenes work on the Spawn Chunks website. We have a template that we use every week for those, uh, the podcasts, blog posts. So I was updating that. Be a little bit nicer. Let's go with that. I don't have my AC on in here today. It's not as warm. That may be a mistake. I do have a fan going. Hopefully all shall be well. Another small bag. I'm sure we're just going to be doing wings from now until the end of the build, as a matter of fact.
Those are actually a little slightly different color. I thought they were going to be the same. Sunny the last couple of days, says True Purple. Scrambled to have the lawn mowed before it starts raining again. We were supposed to get rain overnight this morning, but it did not happen. It's back to being bright and sunny, which is fine. I want to go out and enjoy myself tonight, but we could certainly use a break from the heat. I'm lucky that I have this air conditioner. That still works. The last time I said that out loud, it stopped working. So we'll uh, just be optimistic. But it means that at least push comes to shove, I can get a decent night's sleep when I need to. Because there's nothing worse um, than trying to do this kind of like entertainment work <clears throat> when you're tired. It's um, it's really hard to kind of get in the a good mood when you're feeling pretty drained. I'm sure that's the same for anything, but. If I had a desk job, I think it'd be a little bit easier, maybe, if I was tired to, to make it through the day. Not that I'm saying that being in entertainment is a difficult job. It's more that um, there's less pressure. And at the same time, there's also a certain amount of engagement that you want to have and nothing for me feels worse than if I've left a podcast or left a stream and felt I was disengaged felt I was not having fun or didn't convey that I was having fun or anything like that Oh, I still have a Nightbot timer going. That's fine. For anybody that might be wondering, I, uh, I take a break from Minecraft on Fridays. We do Lego. I've been doing this for the better part of a couple of years now, I think. Had a bit of a break between Christmas and the spring because um, there just wasn't any sets that I was interested in buying. And then the, uh, the UCS TIE Interceptor came out. And I quite like it. Uh, there's another couple of sets I'm looking at that I might pick up. We also have the set that Grandpa Crafter made, which is a custom set. So we'll be looking at that as well. Cool. I'm going to say 202. Bag 17. Dan, good to see you. Hope you're doing well.
from humble beginnings, these wings. I'm actually surprised that they are as sturdy as they are, considering how lightly they go together at the start. Kiwi be good. Welcome in. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. Is there anybody in the chat that's new to Lego Fridays at all? They were, uh, there's definitely going to be a bit of deja vu to last week. I'm assuming we're building the next, the lower left wing. That would make the most sense. They might change it up. We might be doing the upper right wing, but because it, it lists on the stand, I'm assuming we're going to be doing one on the right hand side. P1, welcome in. Oh, boo, I do love those emotes. Those were a lot of fun to do for Johnny. Took me a while, but I wanted to make sure that they were top notch. This little bit goes under the corner. Pix has a lot more emotes than you do. Are they all your designs? Not all of Johnny's are my design. Uh, Johnny took some of my designs, which he purchased, uh, which was very nice of him. Um, he hired me to do them, but then after that, he owns them, of course, to do with what he wants. And I feel like he's altered a couple. I think he might've also had some other emotes that he's had since the beginning of his channel that he had some sentimental attachment to that are not mine. I can't remember the, the artist's name that did them for him. So he's kept those. Um, I was, I did mine in my own style, but also tried to keep in the same spirit and style as the rest of the emotes on Johnny's channel. I don't have a lot of my own just because there it's a lot of work and I just haven't taken the time to to do mine beyond the I think the four that I had. And I think at the time I did the amount that I had available and then of course since then I've unlocked more but I have not added additional emotes. You Dan, you're right. Yeah. Um K Johnny's partner did at least one of them. I think I think um, there's the, the rainbow mug, I think was also, I did like the space tea, which was a joke when he used to do green screen stuff, but then he's changed it now to be, I think it's like pride tea or rainbow tea or something, which is all good. I, you know, that stuff is all fun. <clears throat> the mighty Elkhorn is here. Hello, Elkhorn.
such specific angles. I remember this from last time. The good news is, the stuff goes together fairly quickly. Yeah, I did I did the one of them together and I did the the space T, but I think the animated one and the um rainbow one are definitely not mine. But I drew the one with him and Kay in it together. It was really fun to make a cartoon of Johnny actually. I I really enjoyed that. That was fun. The cartoon of me was fun too. I think I have that here. Yeah, that was a fun one to do. I think the issue is that I want to do more like that for myself. And as a result, I know how much time it takes. So that's why I haven't jumped at it. But that's the perfectionist getting in the way of getting something done. I could just do some simple happy face type things in my own style. I remember commenting last time just how bulky these wings are. They're quite substantial. Oh, that doesn't seem right. Missed a piece. I think I've got one piece left over. Call it being used anywhere. Bag 17. Done like dinner. Blast Jordan, good to see you. Uh, his OG emote is the one on the left, Elkhorn. The one on the right was something that I did. The, the freaking out, the flipping, flipping the um, crafting table. So instead of flipping the table, it's flipping, flipping the crafting table. 
That was one of mine. XK, hello, welcome in. Uh, 2.13. Bag 18. I remember these bags too. Pretty sure there was only two. I thought there was maybe three bags for the wing. I could be wrong. Maybe there's only two. Oh no, we did. I think the first of the third bag was something else last week. We attached like a bunch of little bits or something. And then we did the, the final two bags with the wing. So yeah, so each wing is probably two bags. We might get through a lot more than two or three bags today. Word Nerdify, great to see you, of course. Welcome in. I think I mentioned on Thursday that I pulled a muscle in my ribs when I was squatting this week at the gym. It's, I'm still having a problem with it. Like, it is a real pain in my side. I was going to say pain in my butt, but it's literally a pain in my side. It's not the kind of thing that hurts when you breathe, but it's the kind of thing that hurts when you try to sit up straight. So I feel like I've had absolutely abysmal posture for like the last four days. Because every time I sit down, I like hunch over. I'm, I'm curved over. Silly. And I wasn't squatting heavy either. I was just being super strict with my form and... Probably squeezing a little bit too hard with my lats. That's pretty straight. That, however, is not. It's funny, you'd think that this would be easier with two hands, but it really isn't.
All right, those are darker. So with these. Shard Solar. That's a hard one to say. Shard Solar. Thanks for the raid. Coming in with a party of two. Appreciate you bringing your viewers over. What were you up to on Twitch today? Your first Lego stream says Makesh, Makesh, Makesh. Yes, Ms. Makesh. Well, welcome in. Folks, if you want to go check out what Shard Solar was doing on stream, then follow them here on Twitch. Playing Farlight 84. Short stream because I'm tired from work. Farlight 84. What's Farlight 84? I'm not familiar. Sounds sci-fi. Saw Legos and I'm like, I'm raiding this dude. Nice. Well, welcome in. Welcome in. And welcome in to all the new folks that came in with the Shard Solar Raid. If you're new, uh, if you've not been here before by chance, my name is Joel Duggan. I am a podcaster and a streamer. It's my job. You can check out things like the Spawn Chunks podcast, which is all about Minecraft. That's available on YouTube, as well as any podcasting platform that you probably already have, as well as the Citadel Cafe podcast, which is all about sci-fi and fantasy entertainment, which if you're watching Farlight 84, then that might be up your alley. Uh, there's a new episode out right now, actually. It's uh, episode 480 of the Citadel Cafe. We talked about another video, video game related topic. Actually, we talked about uh, Fallout, the new Fallout show that's on um, Prime Video. Uh, how do I want to do this? Let's break the mold. Uh, it's a battle royale that doesn't take itself too seriously. Interesting. I've never heard of it. Farlight 84. I don't know if I've ever played a battle royale. I've played, well, it's a lie. I think I kind of tipped out into Overwatch very briefly and was completely overwhelmed. Uh, what have I played? Oh, I've played looter extraction shooters. Uh, I can't remember the name of it right now. It was all right. It was stressful. I didn't find it all. It was fun, but in like a roller coaster kind of way. It was, uh, it was a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't think I've done any arena stuff. Uh, whose podcasts do you like? Oh, mine. You've listened to mine already? Shared Solar? I didn't realize that. I thought where you were new, you might not be aware. That's cool. 
I appreciate that. Well, that went smoothly. Oh, that's how you found me on Twitch originally. Cool. That's the goal. The podcasts usually get a little bit more play than my own Twitch stuff. So we tend to bring people to Twitch from the podcasts as opposed to send people to the podcast from Twitch. Which I'm fine with. As long as everybody listens and watches, then works for me. All right, on to bag 18. Word Nerdify gifted three months of tier one to Shard Solar. That's amazing. Thanks so much, Word Nerdify. That's very generous of you. Shard, you can now connect your Discord and your Twitch accounts if you haven't already. You can join the Joel Duggan Discord. You'll be there for three months. And when that runs out, you can either choose to subscribe again here on Twitch or you can use Patreon to remain in the Discord at a fraction of the cost. Patreon is only $2 a month. And if anybody here is looking to join a really chill, like-minded, nerdy community, we talk about a lot more than just Minecraft. We talk about sci-fi and fantasy and hiking and like cooking. There's all kinds of stuff happening in there. But it's a really fun Discord. And it's not overly big. It's also not public. So if you're worried about joining another Discord where there's a whole bunch of hooligans, forget it. They're, it's very small. I think there's only 100 to 150 people in the Discord. So it's a pretty tight-knit community. They're all really nice people. I think you will like them. Oh, I remember this part now. This is where we use the um, arced pieces, these single arc plates, these half circle, quarter, quarter circle, not half circle, these quarter circle plates. And they're used to make space for the hinges of these two by two hinge pieces. Really clever. So you'll see this will go in here and the hinge there's room there for it. Very cool. Except this end piece is just not straight. Why can I not straighten that out? There we go. It's really stiff. So we've got... Layer this together. Again, thanks to Word Nerdify for that sub. That's amazing. Playing a lot of Fallout 76. I tried Fallout. I tried Fallout 4. And I found it pretty boring. Was not a fan. I didn't like the controls. The inventory was cumbersome. Now we're on to this piece. Yeah, my joke is that uh, Skyrim is the walking simulator for medieval fans. Fallout is the m a walking shooter simulator for apocalyptic fans. And Starfield is the walking simulator for sci-fi fans. Particularly sci-fi fans that like games that are not finished at release lack polish understatement of the year i did play starfield on stream i did not like it there's proof out there you can go watch the vods like 76 because i can play with friends and i've been teaching my 50 year old dad and 60 year old stepmother that's cool it's always cool that when you can bring in other folks in your life into video games. I think that that's a real fun bonding experience because you get an opportunity to teach a little bit. And uh, especially if it's a game that has a good story, then I think you can open people's eyes to stories being told in mediums that are not just books and television. I 
I'm really curious how that Borderland film is going to go. I'm a huge Kate Blanchett fan. I'm kind of so-so on Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith? Kevin Hart. Sorry, Kevin Hart. I like Kevin Smith. Kevin Hart. I find he's basically the same in every thing that he's in. Did I do that right? I think so. Yep. No worries, Shard. Thanks ever so much for, again for the raid. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Hopefully we'll see you in the Discord. That feels a little long. Of those, one of those, and one of these, and then four and two little ones. So there's three and one. Uh, is that right? Yep, I grabbed the wrong one. These are very bendy until you get them in the right sort of orientation. That looks right to me. So now we attach it. Piece goes in there. Whoops. And then this one goes all the way down here. start filling it in. Something really satisfying about using big plates in Lego. I like how these keep this at a very specific angle too. It's super snug. They did a really good job designing this outer piece.
There we go. It's a nice detail as well. Oh right, I forgot about this middle middle piece here. The actual support strut thing. Uh nope, that's not the right spot. There we go. So are folks enjoying the pumpkin farm on the Citadel these days? I'm looking forward to be being finished with it. I do find that the scale of it is pretty big. And it's a lot slower going than just planting rows of crops that I did in the other farm. So this goes exactly in line with the other one. And this little piece goes on the end. That's hard to see where the additions are there. Word Nerdify says I only saw a bit of it yesterday, but it was looking good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm just, I'm worried that the process is a little slow on stream. This gets built up again. Remember thinking last time how, how beefy this felt. I think at this stage, because you have to start picking it up, you realize just how heavy it is. There's something missing up there. Remember this from last time being really tricky to do.
think that's right. Yeah, I guess the other one just rests there too, doesn't it? Okay, well, there we go. So I was right, this is the lower left wing. One extra piece left over. I don't think I need that. So then we have to put this on and then attach this last little piece there. So you can't see, but essentially I've got the same hinge pieces along the bottom here. And that's where this goes. And it's easier said than done. Folds in. And then we clip it here and then it cannot fold out. And the real question is, does that bring, does that bring it back to balance? Yeah. I'd like a sturdier stand. I think that's the only thing so far that I've been just like, meh, a little on the lackluster side. I think it should be a little bit sturdier, but once you straighten it out, now that it's got balanced weight, sits pretty evenly. Let me just see if I can get the whole thing in shot here. Uh, 235. Not quite. Maybe if I turn it this way. Uh, almost. <laughs> it almost fits. I'm just curious now. Do I have a tape measure nearby? I do. My studio is just full of stuff and surprises. Not that I doubt the measurements. I'm just terrible at guessing. That is 15 and a half inches from the tip of the blaster to the back. And the wings are, this is the farthest, farthest back is this point here on the wing. So it's 15 and a half inches that way. Yeah, that's not small. It's not small. And then from a width perspective, I guess it doesn't really get any wider than, than these points here, right? And that's like easy to measure now before I put the other pieces on. If we go from the outside bits, you're looking at 13 inches. Probably a little bit more, well, 13 and a half. You're a little bit more accurate if you did centimeters, but... Yeah, so like 13 and a half by 15 and a half. And then, I mean, height, it'll get, it's hard. I can't measure height right now because obviously it'll be up another, another bit with the, the other wings. Very cool. I don't know why I just noticed this now, but the handle for the plasma swords from Halo look remarkably similar to this. No, you're right, Fuki Place. You're totally right. Yep, definitely. Uh, all right, I need to take a short break. We're up for an hour. We did two bags. Truly appreciate everyone being here. I will be back in five or six minutes because I need to refresh my water and grab a stretch. And uh, we'll continue on with probably another two bags, honestly. And uh, we'll see you in just a few.
So that was bag 18. Wouldn't you know that bag 19 looks a lot like bag 17. I don't know if I can put this anywhere where it's not going to be on camera. That might look cool, I guess. I don't know. It's a very tiny, tiny monitor on my camera that's partly obscured by my um, tripod stand. Boom arm. How far did that go? I like having laminate floors, but if you drop a Lego piece, sometimes it goes for absolute miles. Thankfully, I didn't even have to get out of my chair for that one. I think this is the first time I've been doing a Lego set where the set itself is casting a shadow <laughs> on the table. Kira Calloway, hello, hello. Word Nerdify, good luck with the coding. Hope it's a smooth day. Thanks for stopping by, as always.
feel like we can do this a different way. I do enjoy this part of it. It's, it seems tedious, but it's a really zen way to get ready to build something. Actually, let's do these over here. There's always a way to fill the gap. The Nookie, hello. Good to see you again. The weather is so sweaty where you are. Yeah, it's pretty warm here too. Pretty warm here too. <laughs> My inner monk likes the way that you lay out the bricks. Well, that's good to know. I don't remember what I said. 222, 220... Two thirty-two, maybe nineteen. Two thirty-two. Two thirty-five. Sort of close. Sort of not. I think we all know what happens next. I imagine they, these are pretty symmetrical. I don't imagine the top and the bottom would be much different. And in just a few steps, we are already well on our way. Share some rain from the equator to exchange some sun from more northern places. How does that sound? Well, as long as the rain doesn't come in the form of a hurricane, because I live on the Atlantic seaboard, and um, we are expecting a rather rough hurricane season. Thanks to 
climate change and I think it's El Nina is the effect in the North Atlantic where the North Atlantic is a lot warmer than it has been previously. So somewhere around mid to end of July, we're going to start to see, unfortunately, quite a few hurricanes coming through here, I think. The worst of them are usually in the fall. It's usually like September when the real big ones hit, September, October. Which reminds me, I need to get a hurricane preparedness kit together. I wonder why that's a round piece. They could have used anything there. Europe is seeing more weather extremes as well. Oh, I, everywhere is seeing extreme weathers. Absolutely everywhere. I, I don't think there's a place on Earth that is not seeing extremes in one way or the other. Um, there was a, a cold snap out west this winter in Canada. It was like minus 40 plus for people in Calgary in that area. And like, that's not normal. It's because, I mean, I think a lot of people mistakenly associate climate change with what used to be called global warming. But the thing is that global warming, which is what's happening, uh, affects both ends of the weather spectrum. So you end up with extremes in both cases, extreme warm and extreme cold as the seasons swing. Uh, we've just hit feels like 42 degrees this week. And we've only just hit summer, like summer just started this week. We have had warmer summers in the past, but this was the first summer where we hit the 40s before August. We are six weeks ahead of what normally is a, a, a brief hot week at the end of July, first week of August. But this is, um, this is, I mean, it's a little bit better today than it was yesterday. But it's definitely yesterday was brutal. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even bust to the gym yesterday. Like I, I left the stream. I thought about going to the gym. I stood outside for a couple of minutes. I knew it was too hot to walk. I knew I'd be risking heat stroke walking for 30 minutes to get to the gym because there's no trees. It's like it's a six lane street main drag here in the city. So I would have been. I mean, I would have worn sunscreen, but it would I would have been out there in the sun. Even with a hat, it would have been too warm. And um, even just standing outside, I didn't even want to walk to the bus stop. I was like, nope, I'm fine. I'm good. I'll just, I can skip a day. I'll be fine. <laughs>
I think it's really cool that these are used to like attach and secure three plates at a time. All right, what's going on here? Next. And then we connect everything up here. And now, uh, one little extra piece. Because it was a colored one, I know I didn't miss it. And then we're off to bag 20. That was fast. Two forty six. We have got some different pieces in here. Something new. Don't know. Oh, I guess this is maybe the the outside cap. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, no Elkhorn, there are 22 bags all together, which we will probably get to today. Ah, uh, there's two. Yeah, there's another wing. Yeah, this is only the third wing. But whatever this involves, this bag, it is, um, It'll complete, I think, whichever side this is because of these, these extra bits that we have that we've not seen before.
Yeah, we've not dealt with any of this stuff in the last couple of bags. I think the hardest pieces to lay out like this are the long ones. It's just hard to get them straight. I really need to get my act together and start making little time lapses of this process. I feel like that might be something that would get attention on a platform like TikTok or Instagram. So we get these little bits here, four or five of those. And sometimes these things are just happy accidents. I wish I could take the uh, the credit for coming up with a really nice, tidy way to do it. It's, most of the time, it's just luck.
do you by any chance like the world of D and D? Not really a deep, but uh, the level of Baldur's Gate three, for example. I've never played Baldur's Gate three. I've played D and D before. I enjoyed it. Um, I that was a long time ago. Um, I've not. I'm not a big RP guy. I, I which sounds weird, but like when I think about me engaging in a tabletop game like dungeons and dragons i think about it more from like a video game perspective i think about like me controlling a character as opposed to me being a character um and so i i don't take it as seriously i don't think as other people might I really enjoy the world building though. Like I'm the kind of person that would just like to sit down and read like a world building book on D and D. Some of the, my favorite kind of world building books were like the world of Warcraft Chronicles that they released a few years ago. Those were really cool books. It was just all about lore and the gods and the different characters that were involved in the world. And it was, it was really cool. to get like that history. Cool. Crosshatch, good to see you. Have a good day at work. Would absolutely love watching you play Baldur's Gate 3. I've thought about it. I think it's... No, it's not on Game Pass. Um, but I've thought about trying it. I think it was one of those things where like, I just didn't have time to get into it. This was bag 20. Yep. Yeah. Boris Beer, number seven. Hello. Welcome in. How's your Friday going? We're putting the, uh, the wings on this tie interceptor. And have been for a couple of weeks. <laughs> the big set. Obviously, I do it in a way that takes a little bit longer than most, but that's fine. Your exams were hard, but you're feeling good. Well, that's good. I feel like in my experience when I was taking exams, which was a very long time ago, uh, they, um, if you walked away thinking that that was a cakewalk, thinking that it was easy, that was usually a bad sign. But if you walked away thinking like that was challenging, but feeling confident, that's usually a good sign. Usually, I found the best feeling, not the best feeling, but the, the best indication after an exam that I did well was that I was tired after it, which meant that you were working hard to uh, remember all of the stuff that was on it, used your brain a lot, and therefore you're tired. But again, it's been a really long time. 
since I've done any exams. I'm not a big fan of that kind of learning, actually. I'd much rather just do the thing than regurgitate information. One thing I liked about my fine art degree was so much of it was practical, hands-on. We are running out of room here. Maybe I'll move this over here. Today was really hard, says Boris. It was, it was history, seven chapters, and chemistry. My goodness. Yeah, art history when I was taking my fine art degree was my least favorite. I liked going to the museums and seeing the stuff. The trip to New York was awesome. But uh, regurgitating it up into exams. I'd rather write a term paper. That would be worth a lot more. I mean, the flip side of that is that my practical portfolio, when I was submitting portfolio stuff to be marked, was like 80 to 90% of your grade. You'd get like 10% for attendance throughout the year, and then the, the bulk of what you were, of what we, you were uh, marked on was your final art project. So there was a lot writing on that. Whereas the exams, they were never really that much of your grade like you'd have a term paper that would be worth a chunk you'd have attendance that would be worth a chunk there's usually a midterm that'd be worth a chunk and then your final exam would be worth basically the same as the midterm so there was a lot less pressure on the exams i just i didn't particularly like the process of prepping for them because all i did was memorize stuff spew it out on the exam and then never remember it <laughs> like i remember a lot more about life drawing every day and doing hands-on stuff every day than I do any of my art history. It's actually kind of embarrassing how little I remember. It's weird actually having made a big career shift where I still do a little bit of design from time to time. I certainly use my my skills, but uh, like my visual skills in Minecraft, but I haven't drawn anything in a very long time. And I haven't not drawn anything professionally like for a contract in a very, very long time. It always feels loose at first.
Boris, this is the Ultimate Collector Series TIE Interceptor from LEGO Star Wars. One of many sets that I have that are Ultimate Collector Series. Well, I say that, I guess... I've got more Lego icons than I do Ultimate Collector Series, but I have the Collector Series X-Wing as well. And that's a really cool, really cool set. I quite like that one. Bit of a wobbly table. go and we're over to the other side all right the bulk Really cool the way that that looks. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but the way that it's mirrored, it really makes it feel more like a 3D design than just like Lego plating. I'm surprised there isn't a little bit more detail happening underneath here. And we do the laser bits. Is that right? No, it goes this way. Cool. 
cool. And this goes right on the side, so we're not quite done. Still more happening on the other side. And this goes on the left side. Sorry, right side. That is massive. Oop. I do that a lot. This little guy comes off the stand quite a bit. So once again, <laughs> we're listing <laughs> to the side uh, because of the weight of all that. I've got a funny feeling I'm going to need so, so I'm going to keep this handy. Because we've got some exposed green stuff over here that we're probably going to be covering up next. Like that, and we'll grab these pieces. This looks like it could be pretty unique, actually. Turns this way, got this piece. That piece and goes on like that. Pretty straightforward. Oh, so this goes in the front. Oh, I see. This is the, the blasters. And this one is on the bottom. So if you remember, you might be able to see it better on this side. We've got this spot here that has these the two shovels <laughs> that we put in there. And so this piece slides in between them, but it goes on this side. And there's a spot just in there where it goes. Really unique connections, I have to say, in this kit. Some really surprisingly cool and unique ways of putting Lego together. To get just the right spacing. The fact that the lower barrel sticks out farther than the front. I'm assuming that's a barrel. But either way. I mean, these are obviously the, the blasters, but this could be something else. I don't know. And then on the side, I'm not sure if you can see this, but exposed connective bits there, and that's what we're filling in next. And it's going to be very hard to see.
Then we just put on this piece. And then these two pieces. Oh, neat. They slide underneath it. That's cool. Yeah. I think that looks right. Try to hold it up. So we've covered up that pin. I don't have anywhere to rest it. I might have gone too far in on this one. Oh, the whole thing came off. Crap. Let's try taking it off the stand. So this actually slides underneath there. And then next there. Although I'm wondering if I'm pushing it in too far. It's about right. This is one of those sets you do not want to move around. <laughs> it is uh, not easy to grab hold of in any way. Well, it's going to be more of the same. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll take another short break and then we'll finish up the other two bags. I feel like that's probably a good way to fill the rest of the afternoon. So 274. If you're new to the channel, I take a break about once an hour. And it is that time. It'll give me about five or six minutes. I will be right back.
I think we all know what's next. Bag 21, which looks a lot like bag 19. Thank you, Dan. Right. Deja vu. Once again. Which is <laughs> redundant, but funny. Sometimes I wonder whether the extra pieces that you get in Lego sets are mistakes. Because we've gotten two single rounds in the beige in one bag and, and one in the other. So I don't know. I don't know whether that's intentional or what. I guess what's kind of cool about this set is that having it come in from just off camera, it's, there's no question what I'm building. You can't pop into the stream and be just like, what are you working on? Hopefully people have figured it out. All that said, you think that after the fourth time laying this stuff out, that I would be either better at it or more consistent with it. But I don't like I don't commit it to memory. I don't remember exactly how I did it. I mean, there's a method in terms of just like colors and biggest to smallest, left to right, but beyond that. I haven't really been focusing too much on it. I definitely prefer smaller bags. I think as much as I like this process, I prefer for uh, a quicker layout than not.
of course, this usually goes together pretty fast. All right, 270 something, 274. Here we go again. Oh, weirdly, that's the same width as the book that was not planned. I think this is the only time that these instructions have been reversed. Does anybody have any Lego sets that are in their sites? They've shortlisted. There's a new Minecraft set that I posted in the Spawn Chunks Discord earlier today. It's uh, a micro scale model of Minecraft inside of a model of the crafting table, which I thought was pretty cool looking. After the fourth time, you do feel pretty confident <laughs> going through these steps. Although it does make it hard to talk over because you're just like, I've done this all before. Crosshatch, welcome back. See some in the shelf of your partner, but they are from Super Mario. Oh, cool. Which Super Mario sets are they? Those are fun sets. I've been tempted before to get the NES, the NES, sorry, the NES. I really wish they would come out with a Super Nintendo version because that was the, that was the big memorable set for me when I was growing up was the Super Nintendo The yellow question mark. Oh, the, the, the question mark block. That's a cool one. That one like unfolds and has like a nom nom plant. Yeah, the piranha plant. I have the piranha plant. Yeah, that was a pretty sure that was a gift from Cosmic Dancer. The piranha plant actually sits behind me. If you watch the video version of the Spawn Chunks podcast, because it's a green Lego set, it matches the green lights on my PC. So I've got it set next to my PC and it's behind me when we're doing the spawn chunks. On a wide shot, I don't think it shows up when we've got a split screen of the two of us, Johnny and I, but if it's a wide shot of just me, then it's over my, it's screen right, it's over my left shoulder, but it's screen right if you're looking.
Yeah, the Piranha Plant was a really fun set to put together. It wasn't overly big, but some really unique connections in that one as well. Which I think is one of the biggest things I get out of Lego now that, you know, I've put some time into Lego. I really feel like when you do something that's a unique connection, it's kind of that fun surprise moment when you're putting a set together. How imaginative has the designer been in their implementation of the different pieces and this set is full of some really unique connections which i really enjoyed um because i i didn't know that you could even connect lego in the way that this set has done bag 22 the last one Two eighty-eight. Uh, the Piranha Plant would be amazing with some mechanics that, for example, would move the jaw turning with a wrench. You should look up JK Brickworks on Instagram. Uh, if you search JK Brickworks and Piranha Plant, I believe on YouTube as well, uh, you can find a situation. It's not the new Piranha Plant, but they did uh, they did an old um, older version where they made their own. And not only does uh the mouth move on it but it like it it goes up and down out of the pipe as it goes it's really cool i think he's done the same thing with this current set i don't know It was a lot um it was a lot harder I think to hide the gear on the current set. We've got two of these now. I 
not sure whether that's just a spare piece or what. <gasps> oh no! I forgot a black piece. I think that's one of the things that does kind of cheese me off when I do this kind of layout and I forget something. I'm like, duh, do I really want to take the time to move everything? The answer is no. The answer is usually no. As patient as I am, I absolutely have my limits. I feel like there's a number of these pieces all the same size. Sometimes it's easier to get the little ones out of the way first. Cosmic Dancer, how are you? Hope you're having a good Friday. Best you can. Stiff drink in hand. All of the above. You know what I mean? It's it's totally different every time I do this. I just I don't think that far ahead. Stiff drink will be in hand when I am home from where I currently am. Good stuff. At least there's a plan. Uh, that's the plan for my Friday. There's going to be a drink in my hand, probably after dinner, but that's fine.
Right, that goes there. Which way? All the little fiddly bits and we're done. I have to say this day, today went quite quickly. I was surprised. I guess there are a lot of really large pieces. A lot of the, the more intricate pieces inside of the cockpit and, you know, doing the console inside for the pilot and all those details, you had a lot of pieces and ultimately really didn't build anything in terms of the size. Cool. Ready to go. Final bag. Cosmic Dancer with 500 bits. Thanks so much. Just wanted to drop by and say hi on mobile on internet here, and it isn't the greatest. We'll pop back in later if you're still live when I'm home. Thanks very much, Cosmic. I really appreciate it. I know you got a lot going on, so uh, I really appreciate you coming in. All the best to the fam. I know you've got your attention elsewhere. That was 21. We're on 22. At least they've got the instructions reversed, so it'll be a little bit more interesting the fourth time around. I don't remember the other wing being built backwards. At the same time, I want to make sure I don't get overconfident here and make any mistakes. Those are some cool emotes, Elkhorn. I like those.
do, 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 do. Let's see here. Out of curiosity, I've had the microphone just a little bit farther from me this week. And I'm wondering if the audio has been good and or better. I felt like I was a little bit close the last time I did a, a Lego stream. I think because when I lean into the chat room, I end up being a little bit too close to the mic. ASMR is not what I'm going for, the Nookie. Not at all. ASMR to me is like nails on a chalkboard. Not criticizing anybody that likes it, but for me, that's a hard no. Those are the TikTok videos that I can't scroll past fast enough. Someone whispering into a microphone makes me want to just punch the air. <laughs> not at all interested. That are all the like the tapping on things. Stupid. To me. I understand some people like it. I mean, hey, if that's your thing, talk about an easy way to make money online. Especially if you're a US creator and you can get the TikTok creator fund giving you money for just like tapping on stuff. I mean, all the power to you. While the rest of us have to work for a living, <laughs> please enjoy. Oh man, the mouth noises? Absolutely not. If someone's talking so softly in their microphone and I can hear like the lips smacking and saliva moving around, I am out. 100% out. Not interested. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. We'll never see me on your page again ever. Or a Twitch stream. I think that people have to remember too that if someone signed up for ASMR and that's what they're looking for, great. But if people have not, I think there's just as many people in the world that find it irky, that find it appealing. So if you did it as like a prank, you know, in your Twitch chat, I, I think that you'd, you'd, might, you'd probably lose some people. You'd lose me, that's for sure. Oh, there's two of those. All right, the real finicky part, I think, is done. Man, that looks cool. I do appreciate having some of the noises from the lego recorded though i can that's a satisfying thing i don't know if it's necessarily asmr but maybe that's the definition of asmr i just think that a video watching somebody do something with their hands where you can't hear anything at all at what's happening at the the hand level i think that might be a little bit weird sort of a disconnect like a weird disembodied voice and the nookie says the asmr that i like are crafting sounds like scissors cutting fabric on a 
wooden tabletop, pencil and paper. I can see that. Yeah, I can I can see that. I guess I guess there's just certain levels. There's there's the and I guess it's all just personal opinion. You know, it's all subjective. But like, there's the ASMR that I think a lot of people would think is weird, and then there's the ASMR that people are just like, yeah, no, that that makes sense. You know. It's funny how there's a little bit here. It catches on the edge of that piece right there. It's really hard to see. It's like a millimeter or two, but it keeps it from sliding around. It's really clever. I wonder how long it took to get the angles and stuff all sorted on this. The only part that I find kind of strange is how loose it is at the front. Where does this go? This goes in here first. Nope. Not there. There. In a weird way, these little bits are what keeps the ends from moving around too much. That's a very delicate balance. The kind of thing that you're only going to notice when you're right on top of it. Meto, you like the, the sound of pen on paper as well? All right. The wing goes on. Oh, crap. I really feel like the stuff on the stand should have been done last.
This is a really neat process, the fact that these last little pieces can't go in until it's on is really cool. Yep, could be a little sturdier, but it does look like it's going to sit balanced when we're done. Guys might be able to see what I do at that angle actually. So I'm hoping over the next week or so to update the uh, the citadel to one dot twenty one. The goal this weekend is to finish the pumpkin farm. I really hope to have all that completed. So I can move on next week. I don't know what I'll move on to. Hopefully it'll be some sort of cool 1.21 thing. Maybe adding the crafter to some farms around the Citadel, just as a bit of a break. Okay, so you can see in the book kind of where that goes. It's a very simple little piece, but it's really, really well put together. Uh... Step four, I did it backwards. Oh no, on this one, the top barrel is actually out farther than the bottom. So it's asymmetrical in that way, I think. Yep. So says the box. So you should be able to see the shovels maybe there. And this just slides down right in between them. No click, so it's hard to figure out whether you've got it right or not, but and then it just sits in there like that. That's odd. There we go. Again, it's really difficult to put pressure on this. Comes like that. I guess we've got all these pieces left over. And that's it. These are hard to get right. That looks about right. Cool. Well, I think it will be pretty tricky to get this all in one shot. 
check out Instagram after the stream for some photos. But that is the Lego UCS TIE Interceptor. Pretty cool. Maybe in the future when I have a new studio space, I'll have a couple of different camera angles. Yeah, the, the stand is very, very wobbly. I might look up some aftermarket changes for that. Alcorn 95 with 100 bits. Thanks ever so much. Appreciate it. It does look menacing. Yeah, very aggressive looking. I agree. The best way to look at it, actually, is it's kind of like on an angle. But not obviously from up here with the camera, but if you're down, down here, it's a... Uh, very very cool again i'll have some shots on instagram and stuff for people it's just joel duggan on instagram very easy to find uh i'm gonna double check to see that uh, tadpole milk is still live we're gonna send you all on there just give me one second tadpole is indeed live so we will send you along you can follow me on all social media at Joel Duggan. Very easy to find. Check out things like the Spun Chugs podcast, as well as the Citadel Cafe Pop podcasts. There are new episodes of each of those out this week right now uh, at the CitadelCafe.com, the SpunChunks.com. You can find them both by name on YouTube if you prefer to listen on YouTube. The Spun Chunks now has a video podcast. So if you want to watch as Johnny and I talk to each other every week, then check out the Spun Chunks on YouTube. It's a fun new thing that we're doing, and I think you'll enjoy it. Do check out things like the Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Joel Duggan. It's one of the best ways to support your favorite creators. And uh, if I'm one of them, then thank you very much. And uh, it's the most affordable way to join the Discord. Join the community. $2 a month. It's less than a cup of coffee. And it does a great deal to help me continue to stream on a regular basis. Thanks for the bits, for the subs, for the resubs, for the raid earlier. Uh, I really appreciate all the support today. I hope you have a fantastic Friday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Minecraft at 1 o'clock Atlantic. That's UTC minus four hours. Until then, enjoy your afternoon with Tadpole Milk. Bye for now.